Cosmopolitan UK put this on the cover, and it stirred a lot of controversy. But let's focus on whether obese people are healthy, because they're not. I sat down with Arga Van Salis, a renowned bariatric surgeon and obesity researcher, to get her thoughts on the cover, as well as the popular body positivity movement known as Health at Every Size. Do you think overall the health at every size movement is an overall net positive, net negative, or neither? That very line, healthy at every size, is not actually true. Can there be people at any size who are healthy at that moment? Yes. But is it true that no matter what your size, you're always able to be healthy? Like, that's not true. I am anti-weight bias, anti fat phobia, anti-fat stigma, definitely anti-fat shaming. I've written about that. But I don't think that being aware of the consequences of obesity is the same as fat shaming. What I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you could be uh, a patient who is diagnosed with obesity, may have great cholesterol, may be not diabetic, their blood pressure may be great. The fact that their weight is above this, a certain cutoff it puts them at a greater risk down the line, maybe not at this given moment. All those lab values also don't mean that they don't have knee pain or hip pain or ankle pain or you know, lower back pain, which are all things that we commonly see uh, with people with obesity. Increased risk of endometrial cancer, for example, increased risk of mood disorders, like all of that is still there even if our lab values are normal. Speaking about the Cosmopolitan cover, uh, do you think that those covers send a right message or wrong message during a time where obesity in the United States and in the world is becoming an epidemic of sorts. With COVID-19, we see worse outcomes for patients who are diagnosed with obesity. Uh, do you think those covers are problematic, basically? I think they're a little bit misleading. Um, I, I think that the story itself, like the content that they wrote is very nice. And they talk about how each of these women um, what, what, what the relationship with physical activity is and how they feel about their health and their body. And, and it's not even about obesity at all. There were a number of people criticizing, saying that, um, well, especially when we know that people with obesity have worse outcomes with COVID, this is irresponsible. Um, and I, to me, that feels a little bit of a stretch. Like, I think they're just trying to say that people of all different sizes can move, can be physically active, can love their bodies. Um, and I think that's a really good message. I think they are ultimately sending the message and I agree with you on that. Uh, I just think they're doing it in a cheeky way where they're trying to create inflammatory conversation or maybe oh, it's sure. productive in <laughs> inflammatory yeah, conversation. No, no doubt. I mean, they could have said, this is loving your body or, yeah. uh, you know, every, everybody is worthy or what, you know, there's a number of different things they could have put on those covers that would have been pretty accurate um, and yeah. indisputable. We frequently see on the cover of magazines, very slender bodies, thin, muscular, six packs, etc. It's led to true cases of disordered eating going up and body dysmorphia. The sort of rebuttal to this is to say, and that's what's happening right now, let's put people of different sizes on magazines and let's take someone who is diagnosed with obesity and put them on a cover. Is there a chance that that can lead to disordered eating in the opposite direction of people feeling it's okay for me to be the size. I should continue my lifestyle, not make changes, uh, not think about going for bariatric surgery because the celebrities I look up to are this way. I think there's a balance there. I, I think that we can have the covers like the Cosmo ones and say, look, people who are a bigger size can still be active and aspire to, to a health, having a healthy body versus saying, this is how we all are and we should just live with it. You know, I think that's a different message. Um, in this country, about thir three fourths of people have overweight or obesity. Um, and if there were no negative health consequences of that, maybe that would be fine. But the fact is, as we've talked about, all of that um, excess weight brings with it risk for very serious problems that are costly to the individual that in in inhibit their lifestyles um, and, and make it harder for them to live the life they might want. So I think we have to kind of acknowledge both sides of it, that no, we don't want to be stigmatizing people who are bigger, but we also want to recognize that obesity has um, a number of medical problems associated with it. The way that someone like you goes about treating individuals uh, who are diagnosed with obesity, or at least morbid obesity, would be through a procedure known as bariatric surgery, right? That is your specialty. You obviously don't think that 
is recommended for all patients, but it's certainly one of the best treatments out there when it comes from an evidence perspective of not only losing weight, but keeping weight off long-term, and then also even getting rid of some other diagnoses like diabetes, like high cholesterol, et cetera. Why is it that bariatric surgery has better long-term uh, success in keeping the weight off than let's say traditional diet and exercise recommendations that your family medicine doctor can give you. One thing we know about losing weight with diet and exercise is that only about 5% of people who lose weight that way are able to keep, maintain that weight loss. So all of us know people who've had incredible success with diets and exercise, and that's amazing um, and something to be really proud of because they've really beaten the odds. For the majority of people, no matter how hard they try, it's very, very hard for them to get to a healthier weight and size on their own. And that's where bariatric surgery comes in and is really, really helpful. We don't 100% know in terms of the weight loss, why it's more effective. We think that it helps reset people's um, kind of set point, if you will. A lot of us believe that everybody, everybody wants to be around a certain number in terms of weight or a certain size in terms of BMI. We don't know how you know that develops, but that seems to be what happens. One of the most magical things about bariatric surgery is its effect on diabetes, um, especially when we talk about specifically the gastric bypass. We have many, many patients who have diabetes, are on insulin, maybe other medications for it, and then they have surgery today, and then today their blood sugar is normal and they no longer need those medications. So that's really magic. Absolutely. I mean, anytime you can cure what we consider to be an incurable illness, it's absolutely amazing. Talk about the challenges that your patients face, and actually my patients as well, in trying to get bariatric surgery covered from an insurance perspective. Because right now, I believe in the past, you've mentioned that only 1% of eligible patients actually do end up getting bariatric surgery. Why is that number so low? Can we impact it in a meaningful way? I think the obstacles are multiple. One is people in the past have thought that bariatric surgery is dangerous. It turns out that's not true anymore. Um, the risk to dying uh, of dying within 30 days of surgery is less than it is for having your gallbladder taken out, which people do every day in this country. Another is the perception that it's the easy way out, that if you have bariatric surgery, then you have no willpower, you can't do it on your own, et cetera. And, and really, that's not it at all. I think the people who come to us for surgery are some of the strongest people because what they're acknowledging and realizing is that they have tried all these other things that don't involve surgery and nothing has worked. And rather than just giving up, they're saying, what else is out there? What else can I do? Because I wanna take control of my health and I want to have a healthier life. Another issue is time. I believe you would know more about this than I do, but in your office, you're the one who's seeing these patients before they come to see someone like me. And you're often managing, you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, maybe a mood disorder, you know, all these other things. Um, I think sometimes it can be hard to talk about obesity. And also, you know, I think you've mentioned this in some of your previous videos, there's a lot of sensitivity around obesity and how do we talk to people about it in a way that um, is engaging and brings them to the table and makes everybody feel like we care, that we as physicians care about their health as opposed to judging or blaming or shaming. And then the last, like maybe biggest issue is insurance coverage. Um, I believe as many of us do that Part of the reason most insurance plans or many insurance plans don't cover bariatric surgery is because of weight stigma and obesity stigma. Basically, people think it's not a health issue. But can you imagine if there were a plan that said, no, you can't have a coronary artery bypass graft, you have heart disease, but you're stuck. Good luck with it. It's a lifestyle you've chosen. Not only is it beneficial to the patient very clearly, it also should be beneficial to the entire system. Because when a patient loses uh, you know, a significant portion of their weight, if they're a patient diagnosed with morbid obesity, they will have better outcomes, will use the emergency room less, will be less uh, likely to need a stent, a cardiac cath, will take less medications long-term. So wouldn't that be even a cost-effective measure for them to implement? And I don't know why it is that a lot of insurers don't look at it in that way. Yeah, I mean, I don't totally know either. I haven't been in their shoes, but what I think is happening is um, an artifact of our healthcare system in this country. Um, basically in our country, people change their insurance every time they change a job, right? And sometimes even when they have the same job, you know, there's a new election period uh, for their benefits and they switch to some other company. In order for one company to see the benefit, that long-term benefit in cost savings after bariatric surgery, that means that patient would have 
have to stay with them for years and years. And many patients do not. Um, because either they change their jobs or there's something else that they need on their plan and they switch. The only way I think we would really reap those benefits is if every plan from every insurance company covered it, and then they would all be seeing those cost savings as patients move from one uh, system to another. You know, it's unfortunate that we've come to the point where we have to rely on a surgery because we don't have a clear cut way for 95% of people to be able to lose weight on their own and keep it off long-term. Why do you think that number 5% of being able to keep weight off long-term is so low? Is it something to do with adherence to diets? Is it the lack of good information on nutrition? The fact that uh, there's a level of willpower that's involved in this? Where do you think that 5% stems from? I mean, just like anything else, there, it's multifactorial. There are a number of different factors involved, like one, for example, we know a lot of people with obesity live in um, parts of towns and cities where they don't have access to healthy food or not easy access to healthy food. We also know that healthy food in a lot of cases is more expensive. Um, so that means people who are making less money or lower socioeconomic class level don't have access to healthier foods. And so even if they can you know, get by for some period of time and make modifications, you know, there's real budgetary constraints that come into play. How do you talk to patients that may not be candidates for bariatric surgery because you're certified in obesity medicine as well? How do you counsel those patients saying like, look, maybe bariatric surgery isn't for you. There's a 95% chance you're gonna fail in losing weight, but here's how you can be successful. Cause it's, it's a daunting task. I would tell anybody whether they're having bariatric surgery or not, more or less the same thing, which is that there has to be a lifestyle change. As long as we are thinking about weight loss as a diet, as a temporary thing, especially that in a way that we're going to deprive ourselves, that is not sustainable for anybody. The, the only time that you will really be successful, and this is true for those who've had surgery as well, is committing to living life a different way. Committing to living and eating and, and moving differently than you did before. There was a quote that I wrote down in my book here uh, from your Medscape article. Someone commented, I believe it was a nurse, an RN. Um, this person wrote, Body positivity is not about health, it's about combating discrimination against marginalized bodies. And I think that's such a powerful quote. The body positivity mo movement should be about fighting this discrimination, not about saying, that the diagnosis of obesity is a false one or a made up one, or it's a judgmental one. It's an objective measure of someone's risk and current health. Now, does it mean that you're completely unhealthy if you fall into one of these BMI categories? No, because again, spectrum. But the fact that if someone discriminates against you for being in this group, that's what body positivity should really be focused on. I think it's like a yes and. Yes, you should feel good about your body. Everybody deserves to feel good about their body. Everybody is worthy of love. And there are negative health consequences for obesity. Both these things are true and they are not in opposition. And anyone who tells you otherwise, I think is stirring up trouble. I would like for you to have the last word. You're the expert. Tell us what message you like to leave the audience with. I just would love everybody to understand that um, when your doctor talks to you about your weight, it's most times not because they're trying to attack you, um, but because they want to help you. If you're not ready to talk about it, you can just say so. Um, but keep in mind that you can always come back to that conversation. And in the end, we're all in it together to help us um, live happy and healthy lives. Thank you.